This image is a representation of my entire YouTube channel. All of the thumbnails for my videos have been combined into a single image, and this is what it looks like. Basically, I was curious to see what my average thumbnail looked like, so I went ahead and I made a little script to do this for me. Here is the tool that I made, and it is relatively simple. It takes any number of images and calculates the average color per pixel. You can load images from your computer, or a list of video IDs from YouTube to grab the thumbnails of. So with this, I can go to my YouTube channel, find this automated playlist with all my videos right on the front page, then I do a little bit of magic to get the list of video IDs from that playlist, pop them into the tool, and the tool will grab all the thumbnails from that list of video IDs. Here you can see I have 367 images loaded. That's 367 videos on my channel. Looking at my channel like this, it's a pretty mediocre channel. Not much going on, and you'd probably wonder what the point is. Me too. I used to have more videos, but I ended up taking most of them down since they weren't all that popular, and most of what was left behind is just some random gaming videos, mostly scrap mechanic. But anyway, once the images are loaded in, all you have to do is just press this button to get the average image of all the images. When the average image is generated, it first appears very gray and blurry, and you can't really see much of anything. But the information is in there, even if you can't see it with a human eye. So with these extra filter options, you can adjust the image to be more readable for your human eyeballs, and visually see a representation of the data that makes up all of the images fed into the tool. So I make a lot of scrap mechanic content, and you can probably see bits and pieces of what looks like the scrap mechanic logo in certain spots in this image. Just like you would expect with an average of all of the images, if many of those images have the logo in the exact same spot, then those are the spots that are going to be more visible in the calculated average. And remember, this tool only takes a list of images. This means that you can do this for any YouTube channel. In fact, you're not limited to just channels. The tool only considers a list of images. So you could combine several videos from several different channels into a single image, but I prefer to use this to see what a single channel can be represented by. So let's do this for another channel and see what we come up with. I've gone ahead and grabbed all the video IDs of the Mr. Beast channel, and combining all the thumbnails, this is the resulting average thumbnail for the Mr. Beast channel. I just find stuff like this fascinating because this is like a signature, something that a computer can use to tell the difference between how one channel makes thumbnails and how another one might do it differently. And looking at all the thumbnails at once like this, I'm actually learning quite a bit about how the strategy has changed over the years. There's a clear difference between the thumbnails on the top and the thumbnails near the bottom. So I've gone ahead and done two separate average thumbnails. One that is just a list of the most recent thumbnails, and one that is the average of some of the oldest thumbnails. And here we can see the difference in those averages. So one thing that can be implied is that the more recent thumbnails have more contrast, eye-popping colors, and on average they have more red pixels. The older images, you can see very rarely had that and used yellow text at one point. This was just to show how I've been using this tool to gain some insight into what could make for some better thumbnails. You know, when I've made some good ones and which ones I should probably change. Let's go ahead and try another channel. This time it is the official YouTube channel. Let's see what the signature looks like for a channel like this one. And there you can see that because a lot of the thumbnails are from YouTube Shorts, there's a clear difference in the average of pixel color, and so that you have to play with the filters a little bit to see the information in both of the areas. Now this is all fine and dandy, but why? Well, like I said earlier, I was curious, and that's it. That's that's really, that's all there is to it. I literally just wanted to see what my average thumbnail looked like, and so I made a tool that made it possible. But this turned out to be even more interesting than I anticipated, and I ended up learning something about image recognition and AI. You see, this image is very similar to the information that you would feed into an image-generating AI like DALL-E where you would be able to give this image to the AI and tell it that this is the very essence of DERF thumbnails. This image is a representation of the weighted information to give an AI some context on what a DERFy thumbnail even is. So if you wanted to tell the AI to generate a YouTube thumbnail, it has some information on how to make a thumbnail more DERFy. And I think that this is pretty neat to think about, but it actually gets way more complicated than that. From what I just described, the AI would generate images like it normally does, with some extra weirdness in the weighted values. 
It might generate an image with something that looks like a Scrap Mechanic logo, but it might just be part of some background detail or something. The context isn't there for the AI to know what it even is. It just gets the context that that patch of area should be more like these colors. So this is where I realized just how much computing power is required to train AI algorithms, and just the sheer size of these neural networks. For example, a lot of my thumbnails do have a Scrap Mechanic logo in it, which itself is an identical group of pixels on each image, maybe just in a different location or like rotated differently, maybe slightly different size. So even more useful information for an AI would be to get subsections of each image and determine if any are a match. This would allow the AI to learn the context of what a logo overlaid onto the thumbnail is. For any logo actually, not just a Scrap Mechanic logo. The AI would generate a thumbnail as you'd expect, maybe do what it does to, you know, make it more derfy, but then it would also have the understanding to slap a Scrap Mechanic logo onto the generated thumbnail as part of what makes a thumbnail more derfy than others. So if I played other games on my channel more often, the AI would have a higher probability of choosing another game logo to slap onto. And that's, you know, if you train the AI to understand slapping a logo onto images. Anyway, I was just curious to see what this image was, and I ended up making a tool to make it easy, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So for those that are in my Discord and you want to play around with this tool, I'll be making a post with all of the details on how you can do this too. So you too can generate your own average thumbnail and see what sort of signature your images make. Of course, you're not limited to just that. I just like to use it to learn a little bit more about my YouTube channel. But you can use any set of images. You could use a compilation of your favorite memes if you wanted to, and see what the average meme looks like. Ooh, average meme. And I'd love to see what images you guys come up with. So feel free to share them in my Discord where I can check them out. And that's all that I really wanted to share with you guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.